We're going to talk about the future of that alliance with Peter Siegel. He is correspondent for Automotive News Europe. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. But before we get to that, though, the unveiling of this two-headed management team, it's quite unusual. The French like to have concentrate all the powers in one hand, the chairman of the board and the uh, CEO of the company. Yeah, that's true. But in this case, it, it looks like uh, that may have not worked out so well when it comes to issues of governance and keeping track of what Carlos Cohen was doing. So the current situation where you'll have Jean-Dominique Senard as the chairman and Thierry Balleret as CEO, in theory, should provide some checks and balances going forward. Peter, as an American, what do you think? Uh, Jean-Dominique Senard, who keeps his job as boss of Michelin until the month of May, mm -hmm. while he has his new job, is that... What do you, what's your reaction to that? Well, I think he's probably largely disengaged from his post at Michelin. Okay. So I think he'll be giving 100% of his time right now to the, the post at Renault, frankly. All right. So two headed management team, they, they're pledging we're going to have an overhaul of governance. Uh, a lot has uh, come out of this Pandora's box that's uh, since since Carlos Ghosn's arrest, including uh, this company in the Netherlands uh, where it appears as though uh, a, many of the top brass have been uh, paid uh, under the table. Well, the Netherlands company was established as sort of an umbrella organization um, for the entire alliance. It will sort of tally up the synergies that come from the two companies working together. Uh, but it turns out if the accusations that have been uh, lodged against Gowen are true, it's also been used, as you say, as a way to funnel payments at least to Gowen and perhaps to others. Is there any justification for a French auto company, not just any French auto company, yeah. the French uh, uh, auto giant with a storied history, to have its domicile in the Netherlands? Well, the, I mean, Renault, the company of Renault is still based in France, but the uh, Umbrella organization is based in the Netherlands, and apparently Gowen has been domiciled in the Netherlands too for a number of years. So that clearly hasn't sat well, uh, given all that's happening right now in France, where you have a multi-millionaire CEO not actually living in France. Uh, but yes, the Netherlands organization is probably going to be the subject of a lot of scrutiny going forward from the alliance and possibly from the French government too, which has in the past said, we want to see what's going on here. All right, let's hear from the French government. Uh, the finance minister, uh, Bruno Le Maire, spoke to France 24's uh, Stephen Carroll at the World Economic Forum in uh, Davos and concerning the future of the alliance, which some see as being on tenuous ground. Well, Bruno Le Maire says he sees a strengthening. I'm confident. And I think that through that new governance of uh, Renault, there will be a strengthening of the alliance. And the first task of the new chairman of Renault will be to reinforce the alliance. Because this is in the interest of both France and Japan to have that strengthening of the alliance. All right, we don't peddle in conspiracy theories, Peter, but uh, you see publications like the Financial Times reporting uh, when Ghosn was arrested that coincidence, it just so happens that Nissan discovers this malfeasance, this alleged malfeasance, at the very moment when uh, they've really had enough of the alliance the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Is Bruno Le Maire going to get his wish, a strengthening of the alliance? Well, I don't know if we'll look for a strengthening, but I think a continuation of it would be a positive for Japan, for France, for Nissan, and for Renault. It's more and more important as the car industry hurdles towards a future of autonomous driving, electrification, that you have scale and you're able to spread the costs of these technologies out in a, you know, among several different entities. And a Nissan that's 43% owned by Renault, is that still going to be in the future? That's hard to say. Uh, today, it seemed like Hiroto Saikawa was backing off a bit on his demand to immediately renegotiate the terms of the, the cross-ownership of the alliance. But again, I think in the next year or two, once Nissan names a chairman, once uh, Senard and uh, Terry Valery settle into their roles, there will be a review of the structure. I don't think it, it can continue the way it is. And how, how has the French state done in, in all this? France has, it used to be a nationalized company, it's been privatized, but there still is that golden share on the, 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 the French government can block any major decision. How has the French government handled itself through this crisis? Is there a justification for the state to keep its share in Renault? Well, I think the state will keep a share. As if you recall, they did reduce it from 20% to 15.01% about a year ago uh, 
as, as Emmanuel Macron said would happen. Um, but you know what, the French state, one thing is they are the largest shareholder in Renault. So they do bear some responsibility for, for governance and oversight. And, and you could look at, it, look at it as they may have not paid as much attention as they should have to some of the governance issues. I mean, it is up to the shareholders of a company to demand good governance. And if you have this organization in the Netherlands where no one really knows what's going on, then that's on the shareholders. Including the French state it didn't know? Well, they knew, but if you, about a year or two ago, they called for more transparency. Now, whether that was pursued, that's unclear. All right. Well, she'll see how it, how it all unfolds. Peter Siegel of uh, Automotive News Europe, many thanks for being with us. Thank you very much.